Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Thursday, May 25th, 2023. Uh, it's about 12.15 p.m. here along the West Coast. 1.4 earthquake, the latest on the globe here. Uh, also, it looks like 2.0 coming into the Hawaii area. We'll zoom in on Hawaii here and uh, show most of the movement here across the Pahala area. Not uh, seeing too much activity up there around the Kilauea volcano. It's been kind of taking a little pause in the status far as the earthquake swarms go and the uh, adjustment beneath this volcano. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the hazard notification system here. See if they put out an update yet today on Kilauea. Uh, they have been putting out daily updates due to the increased activity there underneath the volcano. It's still currently not erupting, holding steady at the advisory and yellow in the color code and alert level. Uh, no active lava, lava has been observed. Uh, let's see here, no unusual activity. So it looks like things are just kind of taking a little break there at Kilauea Volcano. Again, that can change in the blink of an eye. We'll continue to watch that there on the big island. All right, uh, activity here across the west coast. One earthquake here coming into the Bay Area near Antioch, 2.2 at 17 kilometers deep. It looks like just off the Greenville Fault there around the delta of California. Northern California, pretty spotty. Not a whole lot going on up there today. And uh, let's see what we got for the rest of California, 2.5 and above. Well, looks like uh, only one earthquake here uh, outside the Long Valley Super Volcano, just south here near the uh, volcanic tablelands area. That one coming in earlier this morning, about three o'clock or so. Uh, seen a little bit of movement down in Ridgecrest as well. Some very small microquake activity and a little bit of movement across the Los Angeles area as well. Nothing big. Uh, just some, uh, again, just some very small quakes. No swarming going on there across the state of California. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump up there real quick and see if we got any type of activity going on. It's been awfully quiet up there at Yellowstone. Things continue to uh, look like that status will remain today. It looks very quiet as far as any type of uh, earthquake activity goes. No swarming, uh, no movement. Uh, there's that earthquake from last night or yesterday off the coast of Panama. That uh, six pointer showing up there on the Yellowstone seismographs. It was a pretty large earthquake. They do get earthquakes in that magnitude, it seems like every 15 years or so. We pulled up the historical data and the uh, uh, not a whole lot of large-scale movement. Uh, most of the large-scale activity occurs down here along the subduction zone uh, and across uh, this area here of the Middle America Trench uh, and further up north. But here specifically, mostly sixes, upper sixes, and, and occasionally a low-grade seven. But uh, I don't think we're looking at anything major following that 6.6. .6. We are seeing some aftershock activity, though, in the four range. Um, across the Puerto Rico area, see what we got. Uh, some twos and threes out there. Looks like uh, upper threes up around the Puerto Rico Trench. Been watching this area pretty closely. It's been swarming off and on here across this area of the Puerto Rico Trench. Another uh, accumulator of some uh, stress out here along this subduction zone. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen any major activity here, but uh, continue to watch that. Uh, South America looks awfully quiet, but uh, I don't think it's that quiet, just as far as the 4.5 and above goes. Uh, we are seeing some activity into the Chile area in the 2 and 3 range, but uh, yeah, it looks like uh, 1 4.3 underneath the San Antonio de los Cobres Argentina area, 207 kilometers deep, way underneath here into the Peru Chile Trench, uh, one of the... Uh, earthquakes from yesterday but again we're seeing a little bit of uh, surface activity down here uh, further downstream on the Peru Chile Trench. Looks like we had an earthquake down in the South Sandwich Trench here with a 5.1 that one coming in a couple hours ago here this morning 94 kilometers deep into the South Sandwich Trench here subduction zone of course this area did see an 8.1 uh, to about two years ago now. Has it been more than two years? I think it's been about two years uh, and they continue to see activity. It's been uh, off and on activity for a while, uh, these aftershocks. Of course, it's a, it's a subduction zone, so uh, activity does kick up here uh, quite often. 
With that level though, 94 kilometers deep, we may watch for some further movement upstream. We'll have to keep an eye on that, see if that develops. All right, uh, over here across the Tonga and Samoa area, most of this activity from yesterday. We did have a little bit of further movement, 5.5 .5 in the Loyalty Islands area, just southeast of there, um, along this region that has seen quite a bit of earthquake activity here, including a 7.7 .7, uh, within the last seven days. Uh, 7.7 .7 and I believe, uh, what was the other one, 7.1? First one was 7.7 .7, and we had a whole bunch of earthquake activity there. Uh, and it looks like today things are still kind of continuing with some aftershock sequence there going on across that area. Now down into New Zealand, I'm not seeing a whole lot popping up here on the map. Uh, quick glance here at the earthquake drums across the GeoNet New Zealand area. Um, some earthquake activity from yesterday showing up there. Looks like one little blip of, of an earthquake. North Island showing up on that seismograph, but that's about it. Only showed up locally to those uh, two stations for the most part. Looks clear as a bell across the South Island, New Zealand area. Further west, well, we can't forget about this one way down here. Uh, Southeast Indian Ridge, 4.6 coming in, 9 o'clock. This area is a, uh, a uh, divergent boundary out here. Well, a couple different, couple different uh, fault systems, but mostly the uh, divergent boundaries that sit here south of Australia. Notice the arrows here separating, creating the oceanic uh, um, new crust, so to speak. It's all kind of spreading apart there in the southeast Indian Ridge. That's where a 4.6 struck earlier this morning. Um, that potentially could, uh, could uh, accumulate further stress upstream, a little bit further up here along the plate north of Australia, so keep an eye on that. Uh, of this region here looks like we did have a 4.8 in the Philippines and uh, a little bit of activity across the Indonesia region today as well some fours kicking off uh, here in the Japan trench yesterday 4.5 doesn't look like we've seen any further activity overnight um, on the USG or the uh, EMSC model here it looks uh, fairly quiet you know one region that's been awfully quiet is the Mariana trench that's a little odd. Normally we'll see at least a little bit of movement here considering all the large scale activity down south here. Pacific Plate is a big one and it does apply quite a bit of strain up here against the Filipino Plate, the Mariana Trench right here and the Izu Trench up north a little bit closer here to the um, Japan region. And uh, it's been awfully quiet. Not a peep or a squeak going on there across that area. Kind of odd. Um, across the uh, rest of the world, most of the movement in a little spotty location here across the Mediterranean and the Turkey region. Some twos and threes kicking off there today. Aftershock activity from the uh, earthquakes months back. So yeah, just a little uh, quiet, well I can't really say quiet, but a little spotty activity out here today. Um, but definitely getting some movement it occurs, or it looks like here across the um, bottom of the globe. We'll definitely watch uh, some areas out here north. Oh, we got a 4.4 coming in. Just just spoke that into existence here. Just kind of mentioned about watching up here. But then again, this has been very active overnight, just continuing to show uh, some elevated conditions here across the uh, Indonesia area. All right, uh, let's see. Space weather, we'll move on here. And... Uh, Let's see what we have across the area. Looks like still 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 35, X flare around 5. And uh, overnight we did see, it looks like a low grade M flare. Uh, but notice that we're starting to wind down here a little bit into the C flare category, the lower C flare category, uh, due to the sunspots uh, dwindling away, so to speak. Um, this regional sunspot 3311 that has been the source of many M flares uh, back in its early stages over here along the northeastern limb of the sun has, uh, well, degraded, it looks like, overnight. And not looking as complex as it has been. Um, still looks like a little bit from this sunspot region may be uh, unstable, but 3311 looks like it's in its stage of uh, quieting down. 
Uh, the only other sunspot worth watching may be down here on the south eastern limb here of the sun. Well, it's almost center disk, but uh, man, goodness, these things just die off rapidly. Let's see what we got for the UV filter here. Notice this sunspot region up here just looks fairly um, quiet. There's not a whole lot of brightness within these uh, sunspot regions. Down here a little bit and uh, back along the eastern limb of the sun, not so much. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what we got coming around the bend here. Doesn't look like anything impressive, uh, but we will watch a couple of these sunspots here as they may hopefully uh, kick up into something noteworthy, but I, I don't think so. I mean, it's looking like we're entering into some quiet periods again. Uh, no major coronal holes have been produced, or uh, no major coronal holes facing us. No major CMEs have been produced. Uh, so therefore, the three-day geomagnetic forecast on the auroras look minimal, slightly unsettled though, uh, maybe around the two or three range recently. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot of hope uh, for the aurora forecast up there. Looks like 10% chance or so. At the uh, north and the south areas, the polar regions. Storm Prediction Center today added a little bit of slight risk category to their forecast, mainly around uh, the Texas and New Mexico border, and also down here along the south edge. Uh, south, well, that's kind of western Texas out here, close to the uh, Mexico border. Not a whole lot of uh, tornado potential. Looks like 2% chance with the main threat today being some hail and some wind events. But uh, that's about it. No major, no major expected severe weather. Out here in Northern California, a little bit of chance of uh, some thunderstorm activity. Again, mostly in the mountains up here around Reno. You guys are going to get, uh, looks like a uh, really good shot of some thunderstorms. 70% chance there across a good portion of Nevada. As uh, far as the current um, map goes right now across the West Coast, let me bring up the... Uh, weather radar and see what we got going on looks like storms are just starting to fire up out in the uh, southern plains and getting going up into um, well you can see them they're popping up all over the place these aren't big storms but they are kind of in the developing stage these will probably continue to cook and grow uh, as the afternoon heating allows for some further convection across a wide area of the great basin and up into the intermountain west areas a little bit of lightning it looks like being picked up here um, into the Montana region also down south here as well um, a glance here at the rain accumulation here over the next uh, let's see let me get rid of one of these we're gonna go there we go next 10 days bring this up see what we got going on here for rainfall accumulation looks like most of it here of course is going to be in some much needed areas of the uh, drought stricken zones uh, which is good news for them and uh, Nevada getting in on some moisture as well looks like the next 10 days so this is the uh, ECMWF model this is all subject to change depending on where these storms fire up but uh, a little bit of rainfall kicking up uh, just looking at the long-term weather models here for my area and it looks like we're gonna stay in the mid 80s for the next 10 days that's a little odd because um, we should be maybe in the low 90s mid 90s we've been in the hundreds by now uh, in years past but I will gladly take mid 80s um, because I know how California can cook uh, right now looks like current conditions here uh, I got about 77 here in my backyard so it's about right here around Chico a little bit warmer up north into Redding um, so yeah beautiful um, you know almost close to June um, and June has been one of our hotter months, so I'll take these 80s, definitely. All right, folks, have a good one. Stay safe out there, and we will catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight with the uh, nightly update. Welcome to all the new members out there. Um, and, of course, we are doing our member drawing coming up here on the 15th of June. We'll get that uh, underway, and, in fact, I'm probably going to be doing two I'll be picking out two winners from, and I think I mentioned that on my last uh, member drawing, that I'll do two members every other month or so. 
Uh, we'll see how that works. I'm, I'm not for certain if I'm going to do it every single other month, but uh, this month coming up in June, we'll definitely pick out two winners. So, uh, And, of course, give away some prizes out there. Have a good one, guys. We'll catch you back here a little bit later tonight. Take care.